This is where we started, a bunch of dedicated servers for our compute. We then improved this by moving to the cloud and then the edge. The issue here is that even though the request from the user makes it to the server a lot faster, the database is still in just one place, so the lag is still there. How do we improve this? This is where Terso comes in. Moving our database to the edge as well will improve our system response time significantly. This is for apps that serve customers across the globe, so if you have an app that runs in just one region, you definitely won't see as much of a benefit from an edge database. When Dealing with databases, you have a lot of tools that you can use to improve performance. You have read replicas, which you can distribute across the globe to improve the read speeds. You can shard your database in ways to improve the write speeds. There are lots of tools at your disposal to try and manage the load on your database, but this is a very challenging problem to solve. The good thing with Terso is that they handle all of that for us. The goal in this video is simple. Using the Bunrest API we built in a previous video, combined with Drizzle ORM, see how we can get up and running with Terso. Introductory videos on both Bun and Drizzle will be in the description if you missed those topics. At the end of the video, I'll also show you how to scale your app using fly.io, so let's get into it. The first thing that we have to do is set up Terso, and if you go to their quick start guide, the first things that they do is install the CLI, then sign up, and then create a database. I've already created an account. If you don't already have one, you can go in the description and create one. I'll leave a link down there, but let's get started with installing the CLI. So all we have to do is just brew install, and then Terso database slash tap slash Terso. Once Terso is done, installing then we have to do terso auth sign up I'm already signed up, but this will open up your browser and you just have to log in. Next, we actually get to create the database. So we just do Terso DB create, and then we give it a name. In my case, I'll just call it drizzle dash Terso dash DB. What this does is it looks for the closest location for you. In my case, this is Toronto and then creates my database at that location. It might take a little bit, but once this is done, you'll see that it gives us a few commands. We can go directly into the shell of the database. We won't do that in this video. You can request some information about your database, like the connection URL and then you can also create a token. We'll do both of those things a bit later once we actually have to set up the connection. But for now, that's it. We now have a database. If I quickly log into Terso, you'll see on my dashboard that I now have one database. And if I go down to my databases, the database that we just created is down here. So I'll have my Drizzle Terso DB. Next, like I mentioned before, we already have a repo that we'll be building upon. If you're starting off with no code, I'll leave a link to this repo in the description down below so you can clone it and follow along. If it's your first time cloning this repo, you might want to open up your terminal and just do a bun install. This will just install all the dependencies. I already have them installed. As you can see, I have the node modules here, but that would just be the first step. Next, you'll see that I have a .env.example in here, and then there's a Terso connection URL and a Terso auth token. For local development, we'll only use the connection URL, but we'll need both for when we actually deploy it to production. So I'll just copy the connection URL, create a new .env file in here. So I'll call it .env, paste the value. And for the value for this key, we can just use HTTP 127.001 on port 8080. You'll see why we do this in just a second, but let's run through the rest of the project. We have our drizzle.config in here. We have our schema mapped to a file. We also map our migrations folder. We set up the driver, which in our case is Terso, and then we also provide the DB credentials, but that's all for our drizzle config. Next, let's quickly look at our db.index. This just creates our client with the Terso credentials and then just exports a drizzle client. For the migrate script, this basically just goes to our directory in the migrations folder and runs all of those migrations. Next, we have our schema. The schema I tried keeping pretty simple. So we have a table called users and then another table called posts. Each post is associated to a user, so it's not very complicated. It's just a one-to-many relationship. You'll also notice that we have a folder in here and this is called functions. All this does is, for example, for posts, we have a function called insert post and it just calls db insert into posts with the values provided. We also have one for update posts and for users, we have an insert user, a get user with with posts. This just returns all the posts for a specific user and then also a delete user. All of these come together in our index.ts where we set up a Alicia route for a slash user. And we also have one for slash post. All of these are grouped together under slash API. So we have slash API slash post slash API slash user. And I also have swagger for our documentation, which we can access at slash docs. Next, I want to look at our package.json. In here, you'll notice that we have a few commands. We have db run. What this does is it creates 
it's a local database for us using the Terso CLI. So it calls Terso Dev and it will store everything in a local database. If you want to change the name, you can just change it here. I just called it Drizzle Terso DB. We have DB Generate, which just creates the migrations for us. It's using Drizzle Kit for that. And then DB Migrate, which applies those migrations to our database. We also have Drizzle Kit Studio. So let's quickly run through these commands. We'll actually need them. So we'll start with the first one. In our case is bun run DB Generate. So this will generate our migrations folder. And once that's done, you'll see the migrations here. And all this is doing is creating the posts table and the users table. Next, let's actually create our local database. So I'll do bun run DB DB run. And this is where that URL that I showed you before in our dot EMV comes from. So this is the URL that we want to access our database from. And that's why we put it in our dot ENV. In order for you to use your database, you'll have to have this running because it's using libsql, which is just a fork of SQLite. And it requires a server to be running for you to use that database. But now that I have this running, I can start another terminal. And in here I can do bun run DB migrate in order to apply the migrations. And those migrations got applied successfully. We can even double check that the migrations got applied successfully by just doing bun run studio. And by opening up the studio, we'll take a quick look at what our tables are. So in this case, you'll see that we have our posts table and our users table. We don't actually have any data in here, but everything is working as expected. Just to double check that everything is working Working as expected, I'll create another terminal and in here I'll do bun run dev. Also make sure that the other two terminals are still running, but now that our server is running, we can go to a localhost 3000 slash docs. So I'll do localhost 3000 slash docs. This will open up our swagger page so I can quickly go to slash API slash user and do a post request. So I'll go in here and put my name in which case it's codebrew and a random email. So I'll just do codebrew at email.com. Not a value email, but you get the point. We can send this request and you'll see that it stored it in the database. Going back to Drizzle Studio, if I go to my users table, you'll see that we now have the new user in here. So how do we get our application deployed to production and also apply the migrations to our Terso database that lives on Terso? In this case, I'll use fly.io. So I'll do fly launch. If you missed the video on how to set up fly.io and how to deploy a bun application, I also have a video on that, which you can find in the description. But what this is going to do is it's going to detect that my region is set as Toronto and this is where I want to deploy my application. Then it's going to go ahead and create a Docker file for us. So this might take a little bit, but you can even see it down here on the left side. If I open up my Docker file, it's spinning up a bun image and then doing all the magic that Docker does in order for us to deploy our application. You'll also notice here that you have a Docker ignore. This basically just make sure that you don't push anything to the deploy that you don't want. Oh, and if you notice the deploy actually crashed, we'll take a look at it, how to fix that. But first, the next file that we want to look at is the fly.toml. And this is where we actually want to make a change. App is just the name of our app and primary region is just where your primary region is, which in my case is just Toronto. For build, we don't have any build specific commands, but we do have some for deploy. So I'll put deploy in here and we want to do a release command. We don't want to actually use any of this. In our case, our release command is just bun run db migrate. And this just ensures that every time we deploy, it runs our migrations on the Terso database. With that in place, we only have two more steps to go before we can hit the deploy button again. And those are just to run Terso db show drizzle Terso db. This is the name of our database. This will just show us some basic information about it. So you'll see here that we have our database URL. We want to copy this. And once you copy that URL, we want to do fly secrets and we want to set a secret M variable. In our case, this is going to be called Terso connection URL. And you just paste your URL in there. Once you set the URL, we want to do this for the secret as well. So you want to do Terso DB tokens and we want to create a new token for our drizzle Terso DB. You want to copy that secret and do the same thing where you set a secret, but instead now instead of connection URL, this is called auth token and you just paste that in there. Once that's all done, we just want to do fly deploy and you can see under activity on fly.io that we set the two secrets and then we also deployed, which in my case is less than a minute ago. If I go to my logs, you'll notice just a few logs up that our migrations ran successfully and that it ran our migrations. We can double check this on Terso by going to our database and then edit tables. The funny thing about Terso is that it uses Drizzle 
Studio as well. So it'll look exactly the same for us. We have our users table and then our posts table. So in terms of migrations, everything worked successfully. We can even test everything by going to this host name down here. So bundrizzleterso.fly.dev. We don't have a base page for this, but we can still do the same thing where we go to slash docs and we have our Alicia documentation and we go to post for the users and we can do a test request for code brew and the same thing the email is just going to be a test email so code brew at email.com and we can send this request and yeah you'll notice that everything worked successfully it sent back the user that was just created we can even double check this on the users table we'll just refresh this and the email is right here along with the rest of the user but how do we scale this one of the easiest ways that i found with terso is you can deploy multiple replicas across different regions so you can do simply by just going to the ui you can do plus replica location i'll select the location in here so i'll probably do something far so like tokyo and just by clicking create this will create a database replica for us in that location you can see that yyz is still our main location but nrt is now a replica and it's exactly the same thing for fly.io but instead we'll use the cli to create those regions if you go down to machines you'll see that we only have one machine running our application and this is in toronto canada we can also quickly deploy one to tokyo by just going to our terminal and in here we can just do fly scale count one and for the region it also goes by code so we'll do nrt and it's just asking us if we want to deploy a machine to that region and i'll say yes and that's it it was that simple we can even do fly scale show this will show that our app is running in two regions and if we refresh it on the ui you'll see that we now have two machines and the cool part about this is that terso handles all of that distribution of the load for us we only have one url so whenever you hit that url if you're close to the toronto location and you're just doing a read on our database it'll route you to this location but if you're closer to tokyo it'll route you to that location but yeah it's that simple to get started with terso honestly i want to use this for more side projects i want to find some of its limitations and see where it struggles but from the looks of it it's pretty solid so i'll continue using it if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out the source code in the description and all the other videos that i've made but yeah